Well, hello there, boys and girls, and welcome to a brand new video. Today we'll be talking about a very specific problem regarding the smart vehicles themselves. In this case, it's a video all about the panoramic sunroof of a smart car. As you can see here, it has a lot of cracks everywhere and there's even some spillage in this area. Basically, it is in a very, very bad way and we will try to resurrect it. So, in my very honest opinion here, I think that this panoramic roof is only ripe for a complete change. Um, however, what we are going to try to do today, or our mission for today, is this panoramic roof, this plastic spoiler, as well as these plastic bits on the side that are usually destroyed because of the influence of sunlight itself. As you can see here, there are many burn marks and cracks and all of this is basically from the outside influence on the material itself and uh, well if you look from the inside you will see a similar story well exactly the same when you look up it's going to look very very horrible and if you have direct light hitting inside of it it's gonna look even worse so yes we will try to resurrect these parts and try to finish off the problem that is usually plaguing the smart cars. So let's start with the plastic parts here. These are actually fairly easy to remove. You've got the two Torx screws here, and then it basically just pulls off. And uh, once we do this, we need to protect this metal part before we start the process and we will be discussing the different granulations of the paper or the different grits that we will be using. So let's begin. So as you can see here, we've finished removing the plastic bits and protecting the bodywork to isolate the panoramic roof itself. So yes, let's talk a little bit about this panoramic roof itself. It is actually plastic, as you can see here, but it's not like headlight plastic itself. No, this is slightly different. This is more flexible. It's um. It's a far more complicated material to work with. And honestly, looking at the damage on the roof and all of these imperfections, I do hope that we will be able to reach a satisfactory, if not perfect, result in today's video. So yes, we will discuss the different um, grits of paper we will use to, well, polish or sand down the panor panoramic roof. Now, as seen here, we do have a few cracks. Uh, one here, which is quite significant. There's also one here, a little bit smaller. And if we don't succeed with the process, we can always frame this Neil Armstrong landing on the moon scene that you can see right here. But hopefully we won't have to go that far. And uh, let's begin. Now let's continue with the materials we'll use today. So here I have a batch of coax uh, papers, sanding papers, with different grits. Uh, finishing this roof without using the Kovax grit papers will be a very difficult task indeed. I would say even impossible. But before we get to the Kovax papers, first we will use these old used papers. You can see here we have a lot of uh, grit, different grits of paper. I would say spanning from 320 grit, um, as you can see here, even 1200, 320, 400 etc etc so our process starts with these papers first so 
So first we will start using the 220 grit paper mounted on this uh, hard pad. And uh, let's see what kind of results we'll get using this grit paper. So let's look at the result here. I only applied uh, this paper on this patch right here. As you can see, it is slowly removing some parts, uh, not significantly. It's a very slow process. Um, however, I will have to continue now with the rest of the roof and we'll see the rest of the results after I finish. Uh, one thing I need to point out, the cheap paper leaves the swirl marks like these here. The Kovacs paper does not do that. So don't be scared, boys and girls. So what do we have now? Well, we have a lot of swirl marks from the 220 grit paper. The process is extremely slow. And uh, because of this, I decided to switch to a 150 grit paper, which should, um, well, let's say, speed up the process. However, I have to make a remark here. The plastic of the panoramic roof is proving to be more challenging than I thought. Uh, I wasn't planning to use the 150, but here we go. Well, nothing is really happening here. I guess we have to switch to smaller segments and we have to angle this thing a little bit and just go inch by inch. This is the only way to actually achieve any result with this panoramic roof. So later on So later on in the video when I finish this process I will tell you the exact amount of time required to sand down this panoramic roof Good morning boys and girls and welcome to a brand new day. Yes, it took four and a half hours to sand down this panoramic roof. It was quite a challenge, I have to say. And now we will continue the process, still using the old papers. Blah 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 and these papers will span from 220 grit all the way to 2000 grit before we move to the Kovacs papers. As always, we'll use this hard pad as a transition between them and the roof. So now I want to show you a little trick. It's not a magic trick, but it's quite significant for the problem we have here. Now the roof has been finished off with a dry sanding paper of 400 grit. However, if you look a little bit closer, well, let me just wipe this off for you right here. You see, if you look close, there are still some swirl marks. I want to show you this little trick to remove these swirl marks. Um, it's um, something I do using water with the dry sanding paper. Do not get confused, this is the little trick and I have to explain it further on.
So, what did I actually do here? Well, let me give you a hint. I used the same paper, the dry sanding paper, still a 400 grit paper, as you can see here. See, P400, there you go. But I used it on a wet surface. Now, this is a little trick I like to do using cheaper papers. Now, if you look at the second segment of the roof right here, I haven't done anything yet. So, so you can still see the swirl marks if you look very closely through this blurred image, which will sharpen just now. And there you go. You see? Swirl marks. But... Yeah, so we will have to finish these off as well. But if we move to the first part where I actually use the water to sand it down with a dry sanding paper, you can see that these swirl marks are gone. If not, they are almost gone. So what I'll do now is finish the rest of the roof where I'll be using the cheap paper and I will go all the way up to the 3000 grit. So moving through 500, 600, 800, 1000, etc., etc. Only when I finish that at 3000 will I move on to the Kovacs sanding papers. So let's move on. Now that we are here at 800 grit, currently working on this panoramic roof, I would actually like to share with you the difference between using the Kovacs 800 dry sanding paper versus using a dry sanding paper that is cheap, that is a no-name brand, basically just to show you how different it is. As you can see here, I'm finishing off the roof with the Kovacs 800 grit itself right now. And the other half of the roof, well, that was finished with the cheaper 800 grit dry sanding paper. So you can see here, Kovacs 800. This, for me, is a preferred paper used for plastics itself because it does wonders. So let me just wipe this off and show you the actual difference. So look at this. This side has been finished off with the K800 Kovax dry sanding paper. And if we move to the other side, this one was finished with an 800 grit cheap paper. You would probably agree with me that uh, the difference is significant. The clarity, the purity of the plastic itself, there's no scratch marks, while on this side, there's plenty to be seen. As a general rule, I like to say, always buy more expensive tools to finish the job properly. So now, let's move on. After finishing the sanding process on this uh, so-called panoramic roof, you can see that the result so far is quite favorable, but now I have to take the car for a wash, and prepare it for the polishing process. Hopefully, we will be able to save this panoramic roof by the end of the entire process. Two days later. So, boys and girls, welcome back. It's two days later, or 48 hours to be more precise. I have finally finished this entire car. If you look at the plastic bits here, they are flawless. I have to say, I do hope that you did not skip anything during the duration of this video, since all these steps are very important if you want to get this flawless result. But I have to move on. I have to show you the actual panoramic roof, because this was our struggle this was our challenge that we had to overcome this was the question whether neil armstrong is going to stay on the roof or move on and go back to earth so let's see well this is the result now bear in mind there's no swirl marks 
the roof is as straight as it was from the factory. This has not been repainted. All of this has only been sanded down and polished. And as far as I know, and I do have to uh, brag here a little bit, as far as I know, as far as I follow the scene, I think I am the first person who actually achieved this result through only sanding and polishing without repainting the entire plastic roof. So yay and hooray for me. I am truly, truly satisfied with the result I achieved here. And um, yeah, so. If you have any questions regarding the plastic of this roof or the process, if you have any comments or you disagree with me regarding the results, I encourage you to write a comment under this video, but also to, you know, like, maybe share, subscribe. I would be very grateful for that as well. And uh, keep following me. I have some interesting things coming up this year. I have some interesting things I will do probably for the first time and I want to share with you. But until then, enjoy this result and stay safe, boys and girls. Until next time, goodbye.